We're going to talk to Bernie Reno. He's a senior meteorologist with AccuWeather. He's been tracking these tornado warnings in Kansas and Oklahoma. Bernie, thanks for being with us. That's my pleasure. So explain to our viewers, I guess the biggest question is right now, we're entering into this sort of peak season out there in the plains where tornadoes begin to hit from May to about June, I'm told, according to NOAA. Uh, and why is that? Well, uh, th that's the area where you get the uh, ingredients uh, that are needed to produce tornadoes. Now, tornadoes can occur anywhere, uh, anywhere, anytime, uh, assuming you have the ingredients for for them to occur. And in the central part of the United States, from Oklahoma, central parts of Texas, right up into central Kansas, that's Tornado Alley. That is the location where you see the ingredients come together the most. And simplified, those ingredients are warm, moist air coming in from the Gulf of Mexico. You have have dry air coming in from the west southwest and oftentimes you get cooler air coming in from the south all of those ingredients kind of intersect in that part of the country and that's why it's known as a tornado alley and when you look at that zone there are more tornadoes that form there than any other location in the world and Bernie what do storm spotters look for when they are trying to identify a tornado or a dangerous storm. I mean, I'm I'm looking at a you know I'm not a meteorologist like you, but I'm I'm hearing things like inflow bands and mm -hmm. beavers' tails and a wall cloud. What are, what are people looking for when they try to identify these things? Well, well, it always starts with radar. We we have uh, you know a Doppler radar across the entire country, and now we have something called dual pole radar, where you can see really inside the thunderstorm, and it gives meteorologists uh, a, a more of a dissection throughout the whole depth of the thunderstorm. So once we see the thunderstorm forming, we can look at many different things like the wind flow coming in and out of the thunderstorm. So it's that changing wind direction around the storm that causes the storm to rotate, which causes the funnel cloud, which causes the tornado. And this thunderstorm that we're looking, uh, moving right through Chickasha here in Oklahoma, it has that classic look to it. You heard the meteorologist on air talking about the hook echo. Mm -hmm. That's on the southwestern side of the storm, and it's that hook that you see, it's right in there that you typically look for the tornado. So in this day and age, the technology that we have, we could really identify thunderstorms that can produce tornadoes a lot quicker. The other thing that's interesting, Glad, is that typically when you get thunderstorms that produce tornadoes, it's not in a long line. We see those long lines of thunderstorms that can cover, you know, 50 to 100 Hundred miles. It's the individual thunderstorms, what we call discrete, where the thunderstorm is by itself. If you look at in uh, looking at the radar right now in Oklahoma, you have that one thunderstorm cell, and pretty much you don't see much of anything else across the state. That is a classic kind of setup where you get the thunderstorms that can produce the tornadoes. Because you have to look at it this way: you need all this energy to produce the thunderstorm, and if you only have one cell over a large area, that thunderstorm can take all the available energy in that environment and really intensify, and that's what that thunderstorm is doing right now in Oklahoma. And Bernie, so I was trying to explain to our viewers the Fujita, the enhanced Fujita scale, which is the system that you use to measure the strength of the tornado, but it seems very scientific. Can you break it down for those of us who may not be as scientific? Well, it, it's actually, it's not as scientific as you think. It, it is somewhat a little subjective, but what it is based on is um, the damage that occurs within the tornado itself. So if there's an EF5, you expect this kind of a damage, EF4, this kind of damage. And that's the way it was created, not so much the exact wind speed mm. within an EF5 uh, or 4, but if, if it is an EF4, this is the damage that you can expect uh, given that strength of the tornado. And that's why they call it the enhance. So they're trying to give people an idea of what they have to build to be able to withstand this kind of a tornado. And, and Bernie, these we are flashing on our screen tornado warnings in Kansas and Oklahoma. That's very different from a tornado watch, which may be issued by NOAA, right? Yeah, that means that a warning means that either a tornado is on the ground 
or the National Weather Service offices that are monitoring this are picking up rotation within the thunderstorm. And once you get rotation in the thunderstorm, that means you have the spinning needed to produce the tornado. So it doesn't necessarily mean that a tornado is on the ground, but it, it could also mean that the thunderstorm is capable of producing the tornado. And as you've seen, these thunderstorms, they could spawn the tornado, and then it lifts back up in the sky, and then it comes down again. So that's what the uh, the uh, how difficult it is. It's not like it's a steady state. Mm. It's always changing.